and you're welcome to a brand new season of Analyze This. My name is Tunji Andrews, by the way, economist, analyst, you know, your general ITK. And um, I mean, it's a brand new season, brand new set, brand new everything. And in the spirit of being brand new, I also have a brand new co-host. Hi, my name is Honey Ogunde, and I'm excited to be joining season two of Analyze This. I'm a fashion technology entrepreneur based in Nigeria. I run my own startup, Fashpa.com. And I'm also really passionate about helping startups go from little side hustles to like global empires to take over the world as side hustle to empire. And this season, I'm going to be sharing with you my experiences as an entrepreneur in Nigeria, trying to build a global business, as well as my thoughts on the economy and finance. So it's going to be fun. And I'll be teasing Tunji along the way as well. Uh, apparently. Um, well, we're going to be talking about the music business today. We're going to be talking about everything, where it was, where it is now, where it's going to go in a couple of years, and basically how to monetize the entire process. It's dear to my heart because I used to be in a former life. Um, um, I used to be a music artist at some point. I recorded a couple of songs. I thought I recorded... No, well, no, okay, a couple of songs. Um, but... So and I was quite good. Had, like, I'm sitting next to, like, possibly the next big... No, 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 no. Okay, maybe. Do maybe. I need your autograph? No. You guys, uh, we're moving on. Ignore what she just said. Anyways, um, the the thoughts on my mind at the time was that um, I, I I wasn't I was pretty much you know aware of what the future holds, and I was aware that you know I have to eat, you know, I have to pay school fees at some point. And I could not clearly see the trajectory towards monetizing yeah. this talent. I was very good, but I couldn't see how I was going to monetize it. And at the time, the people at the top of the industry were people like uh, Rough, Rugged and Raw, Plantation Boys, um, I don't know Remedies. People. Wow. Just show your age. Carry on. Anyways. But those guys were not really making money. They were very popular. They were always on AIT Jams at the time. I with love AIT Kenny, Jams. Yeah, with Keke and a D1. Yeah. But they were not Friday making nights. money. So the question I had to ask myself was, even if I'm, I happen to be better than these guys and I can't you make money. You were better than them. Wow. None of them, apart from the Plantation Boys, the, all the rappers were just... No, I like Rugged Man. Yes, but no, anyway. Rugged Man was a later guy. But, but okay. even he wasn't making but money. But okay, if you say you're okay. Anyways, but now, I mean, there was the trajectory at that time where a couple of them, tribesmen, two shots and the rest... Well, you then just went couldn't to, see how you were going to be rich. No, but even the tribesmen and the... I think they were able to see something. They, they stumbled on Alaba and uh, the guys making money from there. Yeah. You know, the guys doing the... Uh, music uh, selection CD selling at the time and they gave those guys their albums started selling then there was another curve when uh, the band P-Square came in there were endorsements from everywhere I don't understand the music industry anymore right so I think I now we're in my era because I obviously don't know your era and in this did you era, guys feel what she just did and in right? this era I'm not that old the Let's music industry that. has I think it's safe to say blown um, yeah, we're seeing has. our artists it go has. from not only just being huge in Nigeria but also like in Africa and across the world and they're making money not just from the traditional way that we think yeah, about it but they're yeah. doing really really cool things mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. so in my era when I, we take it back to our parents she's still era, doing it can that you was see like Raskimono's you know Sonny I'm not that King old Sonny oh. Ade if you can remember since you remember so the other one that um, and we, we have like the music industry, music labels also in Nigeria. And now we're sort of seeing that revival coming back yeah, again. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking like, okay, let's analyze this. Is this time to really be making money in the music industry now? I, I still don't, I still don't see where the money is coming from. I mean, there seems to be a lot of money, but I, I, we have a guest on the show with us that's going to try and, you know, help us understand the monetization. Maybe I might just quit and go back to music after, you know, the show. So. If you are going into the music business, you should stay tuned. So we have Godwin Tom with us on the set. Uh, he's an artist manager and a music business consultant. And basically, he's going to help us understand the monetization, you know, of this entire industry. So welcome to the set of Analyze This. Godwin. Thank you. Where is the money? I want to know where is the money. How do these guys make money enough to be able to buy a house in Banana Island? And you guys have to understand, Godwin Tom is the real deal. So he's managed artists like Waje, Whiskit, M.I., Ice Prince. He's right? just not managed me. That's why he's not Yeah, and he missed yet. out on Mr. Tunji Andrews yeah. here. So we're super excited to yeah. understand where mm -hmm. this money is at. How can mm -hmm. they, you know, so that Tunji feels really bad. How can he get that house in Banana? How can we get a Ferrari, that? that Rolls Royce, uh, uh, G-Wagon? Well, I, to start with, I think there are there are multiple revenue 
streams yeah. mm -hmm. that are available for the artists and the internet has helped us yeah. to uh, see how people are doing it outside the country before you would need someone to come for a conference mm -hmm. and tell yeah, you this is what you, we're yeah, doing yeah. and you have to believe them because yeah. you're what not there uh, yeah, yeah but now we can see these things there are articles everywhere online yeah. showing revenue streams uh, in Nigeria uh, what has happened as you mentioned earlier is there has been a lot of corporate involvement mm -hmm. in in mm -hmm. in generating revenue, revenue for, for artists music, yeah. uh, and and that's still the case. The only problem now mm -hmm. is the artists now need to start thinking of new ways because so even fine. these corporate organizations like are beginning entire. to look back and say, what are the alternatives? Now you have <laughs> Instagram celebrities who are making money, yeah. you know, because they're, they're more affordable for these brands exactly. and they have more engagement. So yeah. it's shifting. So the artist needs to find those revenue streams. So right now you're looking at still shows. Yeah. Um, there are still endorsements. Yeah. Um, there are... The, the internet has provided us with an opportunity to sell music online. The only problem I think people have is selling it to the wrong audience. Yeah, but right now it always feels like to monetize as a Nigerian artist who's like popular, you have to leave the country, whether it's to go to Africa or to conquer the US or the UK. Is it that it's not just possible to monetize from Nigerian consumers? So not just talking about corporates. Can you not monetize from, there's 180 million of us. Why has nobody gone on a tour from Oshun to Ugun to Oyo to Kaduna to, you know? Well, there's several reasons. There's infrastructure. Yeah. But I also think that sometimes the artists who are actually making money aren't investing that money in their careers. Yeah. So if I am an artist and I've made maybe 100 million in the last year, mm -hmm. you know, would it really hurt me to put aside 15 million and go to a company and say, look, I've got 50 million of my money I want to put into this thing. Mm -hmm. um, we need to do that more. Artists need to invest more money. Yeah. But the real problem is the infrastructure. Because in America, I can get on a bus with my guys and, and, we, and can tour. Tour. Yeah. we can tour the country. We can have small gigs, 200 to 300 people to 1,000 people. Um, but Why can't you guys have a bus here? We have lots of buses. Well, safety, <laughs> safety on the roads, yeah. um, bad roads yeah, as yeah. well. Um, also, the fact that there are not em enough venues mm -hmm. uh, around the country. So those are all the things contributing. So the best place to do your events are in schools. Universities already have halls, but the students won't pay. So yeah. it's, a, it's a cycle. And so it's a process to build those things. Those are the I reasons. mean, one of the things I have seen is that a lot of those guys that had the earlier success are struggling today despite the amount of money they've made over their short career spans. And you want to ask, why isn't there proper, um, would I say advice or is it management I'm talking about? I feel like management, them? that management yeah. position is key. Like, because I think the guys that do better tend to have better management. Because you know? what you did say about reinvesting into the business, yeah. a lot of them first want to buy the flashy cars you and, cars. you know, you pop a, and a, a watch, couple of, and some ice. you know, you know. But, you know, it's, it's, it's still your money because if, if you reinvest, you're still going to make more money yeah. in the future. So why is nobody telling them to do that? Well, I mean, first of all, let's understand that most of the artists you see came from nothing, mm. right? Yeah. So when I've never seen five Apart million, a few, <laughs> when I've never seen five million in my life and then you give me five million. I'm first going to, you know, I'm you thinking about scatter. all the things I've never yeah, had in my life true. and all the things I want to buy. And it's, it takes, it takes time for people to begin to see how, much money they're throwing away. Some mm -hmm. people never see it because they're stuck in the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always say to my clients, if we're making a hundred million a year, in five years we would have made 500 million. That's half a billion. Mm -hmm. If you're spending 80 million of that money and we stop making money in the sixth year, you literally have one year to be broke. Yeah, so these are the type of conversations that people need to start having. You, we can't expect, the problem is we expect the artists, the creative minds to think the same way we do. They can't. They can't. That's the same way I can't sit down and write an the amazing music, song. Yeah, true. Um, somebody needs to show them what visually it exactly. what it would be like if they're not putting this money in. Yeah. One of the biggest problems is that our musicians and even our managers, because that's where it starts for the business, yeah. don't really know business. So whether it is the music business or whether it is construction, business principles are the same, same. Yeah. right? So we need people who understand these principles first so that they can now apply it to the music industry yeah. and adapt it to what we're doing. So you have people who go into business simply because I have one million fans. And I was talking recently to someone and I said, look, engagement processes differ mm -hmm. as you go along 
the way. So you have the followers that follow you on your Instagram, right? You may have one million followers. Those are not your fans. So you have the people who then comment and like your pictures. Mm -hmm. Those are not your fans. Those are the people who are engaging you. Yeah. And then from engaging those people, you speak to those people differently. Differently, right? Exactly. And then they're the guys who, based on your engagement, are now converted. Those are the guys who now buy your music. Exactly. You speak to them differently. Differently. And then the guys who buy your music, you need to consistently speak to them to keep them loyal. Mm -hmm. When they're loyal, you speak to them differently. And artists need to understand the differences. This. That yeah. seems really complicated. That's, that's why really, my, that's yes, why, that's it's why, a business. Yeah, it's a that's business. Why like, somebody needs to I just do thought it. I just needed to sing and make some money. Yeah. But I think one of the other points we have to mention about is also like music labels in Nigeria. Like, do we have music labels? And how does a music industry get funded? Like, where are people, you know, like in my industry, we have investors that come and invest in yeah. technology businesses. So if I'm a musician today and I'm trying to get funding to be able to record, I know all those things cost money to look cool, to buy my ice, all those things are expensive. Where is that money? And I don't know if from? it has changed, but it used to be a lot of illegal money. Really? Yes, it used to be a, a large money laundering chain I, I, wow it, it's that's the way i used to see it at least that was where i, I perceived it as uh, um there were a lot of it was either owning a club being a promoter or owning a record label and i mean we can say it's twisted has it changed i don't know if it's um, changed where does the money i think there's several it? dynamics to it now i think more people see the opportunities, opportunities and their now. individuals i know parents that are funding their, their Those are kids. Very nice parents. You're very nice parents. They're funding their kids. I know uncles that are funding I had a consulting session with someone who said my son, my my nephew wants to become an artist and mm -hmm. you know I want to put twenty million down and I'm like, okay. So <laughs> so, <laughs> there's, not my dad. You know, so so there, there are these conversations happening. So it's shifting because people shifting. are beginning to think or see or perceive but that was it there's before? revenue. Um it's there's still there's still drug I want to say it. There's still drug even in America, even Across the globe, I'm serious. Um, it used to be illegal uh, money. You know, uh, in the early days in America, distribution was done by the mobs. Yeah. You know, because they had the networks. Yeah. So it's it's those kinds of situations that they still exist. The only difference now is there are more legal ways to do it, so more people are getting involved. Another opportunity, another you know level is the labels that are coming in. And from I think outside from outside Nigeria, yeah. because they come in with a certain level of structure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think one of the things we are failing to do is to ask them questions. You know, mm. how, what are you coming in here to do? If you're a label, a major label, and you're coming into what Nigeria, are what are you bringing to the table? Yeah. Because they seem uh, to only be signing the big guys, right? They don't seem to be signing like... But well, that's the thing, someone. they're not even signing them here. Okay. They're signing them in the States and then selling them back to us. Okay. And it doesn't make any sense. I, I, I personally don't see why... An artist who owns Africa or has a chunk of African will then go and sign fans, the US go and sign a global deal to... and sell back to his audience. You could yeah. have done that yourself. True. So there's, there's there's these labels. So we need to actually have these conversations with them and say, look, what is your ten year plan? What is your five year plan coming into this region? Are you mm -hmm. going to be training ANRs? Are you going to be training managers? How many artists do you plan to sign? Are you going to help us negotiate better deals with the telcos? These are questions yeah. we should be asking them, not just, oh, this oh, label come. is coming. Sign. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, good. Two years later, we're like, what's happening? Yeah. 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 But I think that's a little bit also because there is no real way to monetize properly here. So maybe for, I don't know, maybe for them, it's, they feel like it's easier to, to go to the place where they can monetize and then bring it back here. I just I just see that we're probably a frontier sector uh, yeah. segment for them, and they're just you know trying to probe and see how I mean, they can make. Here's money how I us. see it. I'm just going to say it plain. Yes. Basically, what you guys are doing is you're trying to figure out how Africa works, and I don't think it's fair. If you're going to figure out how it works, put some more investment into exactly. developing it, and you that's know? just directly to you guys. And yeah. get ready to lose money because I mean it's investment. Get ready to lose money. Yeah. You know, take a few risks. Spend money on a few young guys. I I, I mean that's yeah. that's your point, uh, yeah, right? It's, I guess it feels as if they're just taking the cream on the top right now. Yeah, they're just taking the cream yeah. and just testing the waters with, the it, with it. Yeah. So if you're a new person and you're like maybe Tunji, but right now you're trying to make it in the music industry. <laughs> you're trying to get signed. You're trying to blow. You're trying to be the next Wiz Kid or the next Davido, or you're trying to be even bigger. What are some of like the things that you need to do just to get out the gate? So, as I said earlier, business principles apply okay. across every industry. Uh, and one of the things people want to do here is they just want to blow up, mm. right? Um, the same way you have to market a product to sell it. Yeah. It's the same way you have to do as an artist to market your music. 
So the artist will have two singles and luckily hit the bank yeah, with true. one of the singles. Yeah. And then they don't want to build properly an that. audience and there are people buying followers. So I think what people need to do is learn that patience. I know we all want to drive the Ferraris and mm -hmm. drive the Benzes, but learn that patience of building an audience okay. because those are the people you're selling to. Because it is a business. You, know, so you, you, build, you, you sell business. by building an audience? You like sell by media? building an audience. And okay. also the brands that want to engage you are really engaging you because of your want, reach. Exactly. Okay. So if you're able to, first of all, create content that people enjoy okay. and do that on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, you build an audience. So one of the things the old artists never did was to collect data, right? Yeah. So something yeah. we did um, in 2015 when I managed Wadja uh, was something called a Wadja Christmas. Yeah. And we used the blogs and her Instagram to market it. Yeah. And what we did basically was we told people, tell Wadja what you want for Christmas. Yeah. And that was December 2015. In four days, we had over 100,000 impressions yeah. and we had 2,600 emails. Now, bear in mind, to tell wow. Wadja what you want for Christmas, you have to tell her your name, your phone number, your location, your age, your gender. Like, this is proper data, yeah. right? And then we, some people repeated it, obviously. Yeah, of course. Uh, and, and, <laughs> but, but we got about 2,300 yeah. messages. Yeah. And I took that to a brand and I yeah. said, look, if you want to do this in Enugu, we have 200 fans in Enugu that we can call that want to see, see her. her. Yeah. And that's value. That's building and nurturing the, yeah. the data that you collect. Yeah. Yeah. And more people need to do that. And once you begin to do that, and you go to these brands to say, here is the opportunity, they'll pay you. Yeah. So I'm hearing that it's a lot of social media, using your audience, really engaging, and really data. I always yeah. say data is like the new oil anyway. So listen, I want to say thank you so much, Godwin, for joining us to analyze the music industry. We've definitely learned a lot. Sinji, do you feel like you want to go back to the music industry now? I think so. Okay. I'm seriously thinking about it because I, I mean, I understand the business angle to which you've spoken about yeah. completely because it's no different from any other um, business. And um, and I also have the music. I used to have it on lockdown. I'm not sure if I still have it. Why but... don't we check that now? Why don't you give me some, you know, give me some bars. Let me drop a beat real quick. Is, is it going to sign me? Is it going to sign me, though? Okay, no, 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 seriously, I'm going to do this, right? So, um, even though I've not got a bit, this is a classic. And I must confess that at the end that we might need a casket. Speaking economy, indicators in front of me, 60% of Nigeria's living in poverty. Government burying their head in the sand, wasting cash on road shows from here to Japan while, while we continue to ban. But nobody's asking about the ordinary man who's in the rat race. Uche not looking at my face, cause inflation going up at a fast pace. Market forces on the prowl. It's like they're trying to kill citizens like shh. Pow! Suffering the green back. But CBN's got its own terror squad, so I lean back. Some assess they want to kick back. So I drop Emperor a line like a sin pack. Yeah, so you, you should oh, sign shit, me. Oh, shit, bad You should sign me. You should sign me. I please, still have... please give me your email address. I'll, I'll email a contract. You see, on the show, I got a record label. Yes. I got a record deal. Definitely, that was hot. Vic O definitely needs to watch out because you're about to take oh his Oh, my God. Crowd. Oh, my God. Um, so, if you oh want to discuss with us more about the music industry and find out about Analyze This, you can reach me at Honey Ogundei on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and Facebook. And Mr. Tunji Andrews, the rapper. Yes, you can reach me on um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, everywhere, Tunji Andrews. And my social media handles are at Godwin Tom on all social media platforms. My website is godwintom.com. And if you would like to book any of my clients, <laughs> please visit imanageafrica.com. Always Thank thinking you. about the money. And yeah. don't forget, at Indani TV as well on all the social media handles using the hashtag Analyze This. It's been another cool episode of Analyze This. Can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.